Sign up at the end of this review to get my personal gear list. That was cool. The question that I was going to ask yeah. you, and I did, and I need more. All right, good. I need your favorite tone wood combination. Combination? Yes. Oh, that's not what you asked. You wanted one tone wood. Oh, oh. Poor phrasing of question. This is why okay. we're doing round three. Okay. It depends on the guitar. So <sighs> let's, let's, let's do this one step at a time, okay? History has shown with acoustic guitars that an ebony bridge and an ebony fretboard works. I mean, we know that over history. Now, you can make this an ebony bridge and a Brazilian rosewood fretboard. You can make an ebony bridge and a Honduran rosewood fretboard. There's a lot of other combinations you could do. But that just seems to musically work. Just like on a violin, having a um, maple bridge and an ebony fretboard. Right. Right. Okay. My experience is that with tops, there are several species in the um, evergreen family that work, uh, but the spruces seem to do a really good job. Now, when I started in my original shop, I decided I could spend 10 years researching all the woods and deciding which ones sounded the best, or I could trust the guys that had come before me assuming they had done their homework and just trust them and use the woods that they use. And I decided I didn't have the 10 years and I would trust them. So when we started making acoustic guitars, we started with red spruce and European spruce and all the different kinds of spruces. It seems to work really well. Um, it turns out, in my experience, just from my point of view, they were right. Uh, um, with violins, with acoustic guitars, with electric guitars. So um, when it comes to the neck, mahogany necks seem to work really, really well. This guitar, of all weird things, has an ebony back and sides, and it sounds gorgeous. Um, once again, you're building a speaker cabinet, so you want the sound to, to erupt out. That guitar is completely and totally made out of koa. Um, and it's beautiful stuff, and it has a different kind of sound than Spruce does. You're not going to get the same sound out of a Koa top guitar that you are out of a Spruce top guitar. So let me just apples to apples to apples, same guy picking, right? It's got a teeny bit more lower mid-range to it, do you hear? It still has high end, it still has bass, but it, it's, it's got a different kind of high mid-range and volume. Oh, yeah. Thank you for starting me playing Norwegian Wood. I love it. <laughs> so, um, so spruce braces on the top. I like using mahogany braces on the back. Um, a lot of guys use spruce braces on the back, but I was kind of following what Torres did. I think that Torres guitar that I played was so extraordinary that I wanted to assume from the moment he it was extraordinary because he knew what he was doing and then I wanted to understand what he was thinking and so I started with Steve at the time playing around with those woods so ebony and spruce and mahogany and rosewoods for acoustic guitars yeah. if you pinned me to the floor and said that's the only wood <laughs> you can use but this world is so uh, different now you can't make the same thing over and over again somebody wants to buy something that nobody else has that top doesn't exist in that exact flame and that look then on that guitar and if somebody buys that guitar that's it it's the only one that that way this is the only ebony guitar that's going to have exactly this pattern and so there's some of that going on too which is the best and, and i must say that i've uh last march i was out at, at your place mm -hmm. and uh we got a chance to look through the vault and all the wood all the wood that you have, which is absurdly mind-blowing. Not only in variety, yeah. but within a stack of Coca Bolo. Right. I, I gotta sat there for an hour. It's just, it, it is absolutely insane. How the heck? I've got good wood buyers. <laughs> but, but, but let's talk about, for them. Yeah. 
if they call you and, and, and you pick the woods out for them, you can even take a picture while you're in the vault, oh, yeah. while they're, you know, online with you and say, no, I'll take the third one, that, that totally. one, and you can build the guitar for them through us. To me, that was the whole idea. The whole idea was that you could make uh, a guitar specifically for somebody, yeah. and we'll, we'll make the guitar, you help them pick out the woods, and that guitar, they approved the literally the bones and the and the and the meat of the entire guitar right yeah. there from the beginning you know that that top looked like that when you saw it right yeah. so i would love it if that you had that relationship where they could say look go to the vault um, you'll be there at Tuesday at two o'clock i'll be on my emails send me all the pictures of the um, uh, figure coca bowl that they have you say, look, I found three extraordinary ones. Would you want one of these? And he, and he goes, I'll take that. We're done. And then what fun. And then there are you know, different kinds of tops, whether it be bear claw or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It would be just good fun to have that relationship uh, from customer to dealer to the manufacturer to the wood supply. Absolutely. And I, would, and, and I must say I would like to share the vault with everybody who could never go in there because if you're a guitar geek, it's beyond mind blowing. So come do a video. So come do a video at the vault. There's two of them, by the way. There's uh, there's the one for private stock, and then there's the one for artist pack, and then there's the whole side of the artist pack ones for acoustics. Come do a video, and people can go. The problem is if you show the whole video and then that top's gone next week. Sorry, <laughs> it's gone. Get one like that. Well, God didn't really make another one exactly like that. I can't tell you how many times we get letters. I want top like in private stock 362. I'm like, uh, we'll come close. <laughs> we'll come close. So you're a guitar player so, yeah. and you play very, very well. Some people play guitar. Some people play music. Sounds to me like you play music. So are you playing town a lot? What's the deal? You, how I do. You learn? I do. I play in, in a whole slew of different bands and solo stuff. And Are you an electric guitar player and an acoustic guitar I player? I am primarily acoustic guitar player, yeah. although uh, I've been known to get wrangled into playing electric bass in the band, which is just a blast. When, they, when the bass player didn't show up. Yeah. When the bass player didn't show up. They're like, the bearded guy, throw him up there, he yeah. looks fine. Um, no, I actually primarily play acoustic instruments, bluegrass, uh, play a lot of dobro, play a lot of, mm -hmm. just a lot around town, and it's, it's a blast. It's interesting, we sat down, and the first thing we did was just start playing guitar, and you're a musician, and I, I play in bands, and so it's easy to, it's a, it's a language. If yeah. we didn't speak English, we still could do it, right? Absolutely. Well, let's, let's um, I think we should pick a little bit, you know? Right, I see so you have I, a pick?
That was beautiful. That was fun. <laughs> that was cool. Thank you very much, Paul Reed Smith. Thank you, Acoustic Letter viewers and crew. Hope you enjoyed this interview, and I look forward to seeing you on the next Acoustic Guitar Review. Thank you. Got all these sounds. You got this as well. See, I, I had that marked up so I can go. <laughs> so I can play bass with my.